Good afternoon. The April 16th, 2019 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order, and we're pleased to have with us here this evening Director of Purchasing, Bill Peacock, and he will lead us in our invocation, and, at, and also after the invocation, please remain standing uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings that you've provided past, present, and future. Father, we pray that the, the decisions and the conversation that take place here tonight would glorify you in all ways. Father, we're thankful for this time of year as we're celebrating um, the death and resurrection of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we're thankful again for the many blessings. We just ask that you be with our county, be with our officials, be with our citizens, and be with the county workforce as we go about providing uh, the much needed services. Father, we're so thankful, and we just want to give you the honor and glory for everything that's done. And we pray these things in the son name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Director Peacock, for being here with us, uh, with us this evening, evening and leading us in our invocation. And good evening again to the citizens of Douglas County. We value your voice and appreciate your participation in county government. Public comment. Clerk, I believe we have one uh, citizen who signed up tonight. Um, and before you come up in our citizen is Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. P Pierce, please uh, be mindful of our three-minute time limit. Uh, as you address this government, and you could please come forth. And when you come forth, if you could just uh, state your name again, your address, and your subject matter. It again has to be uh, germane to the agenda, and it is. It's number seven. That's the item that you're looking at, which is about credit cards. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. I didn't realize I had two watches on till just now. I got this crazy watch at an estate sale. It said talk and watch. It actually talks to you, tells you what time it is. Um, I normally don't have anything to say because I have to stick to the topic at hand. But I saw number seven. And that kind of scared me. And the reason it scared me because uh, I have three credit cards. When one doesn't work, I use the other one. And if that one doesn't work, I got to go talk to the bank. Now, I just asked one of your commissioners. It says Douglas County elected officials. And I said, does that mean all elected officials? And he said, yeah, that's what it says. So I think there ought to be some stipulation that if you have good credit, because I'm not going to get into it tonight about nothing, but if you don't have good credit, or some form of credit, you don't deserve the trust of us or y'all. And I will say, there are some elected officials that just got garnished last year, paid it off, and garnishment years before that. And I would like to say, that as hard as I've worked on this situation to get y'all not to be enablers, the truth is y'all have become enablers to some people. Now, said that, the issue is who am I talking about? 
Well, I'm not going to say who I'm talking about because it ought to be known. But I will tell you this. There's absolutely nothing in that person's name because of what I just said. No cars, no house, no nothing. And it started years before in the Douglas County Sheriff's Department. Garnishment after garnishment, lien after lien, bankruptcies. Mr. Pierce. So this is normally something that's trustworthy. Mr. Pierce, your time has expired. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll take this matter under advisement. Thank you so much. Uh, Clerk, I believe we, that's all we have for public comment. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, you have uh, the approval of the minutes before you. Board of Commissioners, you have the commission minute, um, meeting minutes of April 2nd, 2019, the work session minutes of April 1st, 2019, and the executive session minutes of April 1st, 2019. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, no ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand as approved. Next, we have proclamations. Proclamations, we have three tonight. Tab number four is recognition of our state legislative delegation, and that will be led by our own external affairs director, Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Good morning, Chairman Jones, uh, members of the Board of Commissioners. Um, I am the Director of External Affairs, and part of my responsibilities is working with our um, elected officials on the state and, lo and local level, as well as the federal level. And um, I have the honor and opportunity to work with some very dedicated um, people who work very hard for the citizens of Douglas County, but also for the citizens of the state of Georgia. And today, I would like to read a proclamation and appreciation of them. <coughs> Excuse me in appreciation of the Douglas County Legislative Delegation. Whereas the Douglas County Legislative Delegation was created for the purpose of meeting between, meetings between the Georgia House and Senate members, Douglas County Commissioners, school board members, constitutional officers, and Douglas County City officials, and whereas legislators of the delegation are Senators Mike Dugan, Senator Donzella Jane, House Representatives Roger Bruce, Kimberly Alexander, Sharon Beasley Teague, William Bodie, Jay Collins, and Micah Gravely. And whereas the delegation meets annually each fall with the Douglas County elected officials to discuss legislative issues that are important for the citizens and the needs of Douglas County. And whereas each year a day at the Capitol is held where citizens and local elected officials can come to the Capitol to see our legislators at work and seek sponsors for legislative items and follow up on key legislative requests. And whereas the Douglas County delegation has played an integral role in shaping Douglas County into what it is today. And Douglas County is grateful for the many years of service toward improving the quality of life in Douglas County and diligently striving to serve and do everything possible to improve the county. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners expresses our gratitude and appreciation for the delegation's continuous and unwavering support of our citizens in Douglas County. So proclaim the 16th day of April, 2019. Thank you so much, Director Stanley. We truly appreciate uh, the large bo body of work that our uh, state legislative delegation produced for Douglas County, and we are just sincere about our appreciation about all the hard things that they do or the hard work that they do here for Douglas County citizens. Um, they had a great session this year. Thank you all so much, and I would like, if we could, our state delegation that's here, if you could just stand so we could just give you a round of applause. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Board of Commissioners, you heard this proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes.
We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Congratulations, thank you so much state delegation um, for all the great things that you do for all the citizens here in Douglas County. And I believe I have something from Commissioner Robinson, the Vice Chairman, would you like to speak? Yes, Mago. Yes. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to, to reiterate, and it, this is something that uh, uh, for the most part, citizens here, we have mutual citizens with our delegation. Um, and um, we all pretty much for the most part have to serve them. Um, from a county perspective, it's roughly 145, 150,000 people. And um, we, we have an interest in them and we care about them. But you gotta think about what our delegation does. And this is why I've get, I have nothing but respect for our delegation and the office they hold. They're responsible for what, over 9 million lives. We're just 150,000. The decisions that they have impacts a much greater group of people. So when I see them um, in the well, and I see what they do, and I look at them from afar, I'm like, I get it. I get the order of magnitude. I get the decisions they make. I mean, we talk about spay and neuter of animals and, and, and population control. They have to deal with much, much broader, deeper issues. Yes. Voting rights, right? Women's rights, right? That, that's something that at the local level, there is a big difference between the General Assembly um, and us at a local level. So I have nothing but hats off for some of the tough decisions that you have to make. Like us, 95% of it just rolls, right? It's, it's no big deal. But every now and then, you gotta weigh in on something. And I appreciate it, and I, I, I revere um, the decisions that you guys have to make, because I know some of them are not easy. Um, and you should be respected just by default, regardless of partisan or whatever, um, as an elected official at the state level, nothing but respect. I'm Chair, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much. We would also like to recognize uh, each of our legislators tonight with uh, a plaque and also we call a glass trophy. So if you could come forth, uh, who do you have, Tiffany? Okay, well, the, um, the first one we have, and I'll just read the first one. Um, this plaque states that the Douglas County P Board of Commissioners um, presents to the Douglas County State Delegation the Honorable Roger Bruce in recognition of your amazing service and leadership in Douglas County and Georgia at large. Thank you, 2019. Okay, and do we have his uh, yes, certificate? Have and all your, your proclamations are personalized to your bios and the things that you have done in your lifetime, so we wanted to specialize and make it very specific to you. And then once we finish um, distributing these, uh, both the plaques and the um, proclamations, we will take photographs. Yeah, we're going to come down and take a photograph with you. Thank you. We're coming. We didn't want to load your hands up too much. <laughs> and our next plaque is also presented to the Honorable Kimberly Alexander in recognition of your amazing service and leadership in Douglas County and Georgia at large. <laughs> and our uh, last plaque goes to uh, Representative William Bodie um, in recognition of your amazing service and leadership in Douglas County and Georgia at large. Thank you. You mind if we come down and take a photograph with you? We'll come down and take a photograph with you all.
jury's coming by. <laughs> No, we, we I'll let her <laughs> Yeah, we, she can come. Thank you, No problem. Wow. Hey, Senator James, how are you today? We are glad you're here. And we, you just, you're actually just in time. So we wanted to recognize you as well with our, our state uh, delegation today. And we appreciate all the amazing work that you do. You are phenomenal, and uh, you respond to the needs of Douglas County, just as all the, your other colleagues. And Commissioner Robinson, if you could just repeat in an abbreviated manner what you said to the other delegation, that would be great. Because okay. I love him. He just yeah. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, repeat. OK, what did I say? Um, usually it's from the heart, so I'll, I'll do it this way um, um, to all of you again, and I'll just reiterate fully for the public that's looking at this that um, our, our state delegation of senators and representatives should be wholly respected, <laughs> independent of partisanship. Um, the, the decisions that they have to make, um, the order of magnitude that they have to make. I, I talked about earlier, there are over 9 million citizens and compared to us, us five having to deal with 150 for easy math. Our budget of all in 110 million versus their $28 billion budget. There's a difference, mm -hmm. and they should be respected. And so again, some of the issues that they have to deal with, whether it's voting rights or women's rights or whatever the case may be, um, uh, makes our decisions about which side of the road do we fill in a pothole, from the left side or from the right side. It's, it's irrelevant. Um, so it, it, again, we appreciate you when you're in that well um, understand what you have to face and the decisions that you make. And I, I just say, again, for all citizens, since we um, mutually have the same citizens, much respect should be given to your office at any time. So, madams and sirs, thank you so much for your service. I yield. Okay. Yes. Thank you, and thank you all, all for advocating for Douglas County. Tiffany? All right. And uh, Senator James, in recognition of your amazing service and leadership in Douglas County and Georgia at large, we present you with this plaque and a personalized proclamation from the Board of Commissioners. Oh, it's beautiful. All right. We've already voted to approve it, so what we're going to do is come down and take a photograph with you, Senator. Yes. All right, that was great, and again, we appreciate all the hard work that our state delegation 
uh, is doing here in Douglas County and advocating and fighting for us every day. We <coughs> truly do not take your work lightly. Next, Board of Commissioners, tab number five. We have another proclamation, recognition of Re Representative Roger Bruce's 17th annual uh, Family Fun Day Catfish Rodeo Anniversary. Commissioner Carthen, I, you, I know you have the privilege of serenading and speaking to our wonderful um, representative about this great event every year. I do, Representative Bruce. Um, I have attended your Catfish Rodeo twice since I've been a Douglas County resident. And it was actually the first time that my girls got a chance to fish at the Sweetwater Park. Uh, so um, in recognition of that, and in the recognition of you doing it for 17 years, which is amazing, uh, we the Board of Commissioners would like to honor you. So the proclamation reads, Whereas Georgia House Representative Roger Bruce was first elected in 2003 and reelected every two years since then. And whereas Representative <coughs> Roger Bruce was elected to serve District 61 constituents, which includes parts of Douglas County. And whereas Representative Roger Bruce has focused on issues related to children, the aging, education, working families, economic development, voting rights, criminal justice reform, and sponsored legislation such as the Parent Protection Act. And whereas Representative Roger Bruce serves on the judiciary, game, fish, and parks, small business and job development, human relations, and aging communities. And whereas Representative Roger Bruce faithfully serves as the chairman of the Douglas County Legislation Delegation during the Georgia General Assembly of the U.S. State of Georgia session. And whereas, Representative Roger Bruce started the annual Family Fun Day Catfish Rodeo, held yearly in Sweetwater State Park, where families enjoy free fishing, food, games, music, and fun fellowship. And whereas, Representative Roger Bruce will celebrate the 17th annual Family Fun Day Catfish Rodeo at Sweetwater State Park on May 18th, 2019. Now, therefore, the Board of Commissioners of Douglas County do hereby recognize Representative Roger Bruce and his role of advancing and producing great representation of the Douglas County community and pay honor to you, Representative Roger Bruce, this 16th day of April 2019. Thank you. Wow. Representative Roger Bruce, thank you so much. You know, I have, I have attended about three times, I uh, had the privilege, but I've never had an opportunity to arrive in time to get a piece of catfish. <laughs> so what I will do this time, I'll, if you could just save me I, a piece. I've heard how great it is and uh, that this uh, catfish is, and I am a Southern girl by nature and I would love to have some. But anyway, to make a long story short, I just wanted to congratulate you and thank you for hosting this uh, wonderful event here in Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, anyone else have any input or insight uh, about this event before I call for a motion? Well, Board of Commissioners, you heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. All right, we have two seconds. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a, a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. <clears throat> Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Congratulations, uh, Representative Bruce, and thank you for hosting this wonderful event here in Douglas County. All right, I have, we have one more proclamation tonight, and we have a photograph with you again. Yes, yes, you want to come up with us? Let him come up You want to come up, or you want us to come down? All right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. 
All right, at this time we have one more proclamation and that is tab number six for the commissioners. Tab number six, yes. proclaiming the month of April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month in Douglas County and we have tonight with us Katie Hilbert and Katrina Hartley. Welcome, Lisa, Thank how are you all doing in, to, this evening? Well, good evening. I am Katrina Harley. I'm the Director of Forensic Services for the Douglas County Child Advocacy Center. And I'm Katie Hilbert. I'm the Executive Director of Children's Voice CASA, which is our court-appointed special advocate program. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Whereas in federal fiscal year 2017, Child Protection Service agencies received a national estimate of 4.1 million referrals uh, approximately, involving approximately 7.5 million children. And whereas child abuse and neglect is a serious problem affecting every segment of our community, and finding solutions requires input and action from everyone in our community. And whereas our children are our most valuable resources and will shape the future of Douglas County, and whereas child abuse can have long-term psychological, emotional, and physical effects that have lifelong, lifelong consequences for victims of abuse, and whereas protective factors are, con are conditions that reduce or eliminate risks and promote the social, emotional, and developmental well-being of children. Whereas effective child abuse prevention activities succeed because of the meaningful connections and partnerships created between child welfare, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, businesses, and law enforcement agencies. Whereas communities must make every effort to promote programs and activities that benefit children and their families. Whereas we acknowledge that we must work together as a community to increase awareness about child abuse and contribute to promote the social and emotional well-being of children and families in a safe, stable, nurturing environment. Whereas prevention remains the best defense for our children and families. Now therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim April 2019 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Douglas County and urge all citizens to recognize this month by dedicating ourselves to the task of improving the quality of life for all children and families. So proclaim this 16th day of April 2019. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie and Katrina. And thank you so much for advocating for child abuse uh, prevention here in Douglas County and in Georgia at large. Um, absolutely, you're correct. Prevention remains the best for defense. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. So thank you all for taking this information and, and uh, out, not just Douglas County, but beyond our county, making sure that everyone knows that child abuse is not the right thing. And all our children should be treated with love, kindness, and with a gentle touch. And thank you so much for that. Board of Commissioners, you've heard this proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes.
We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Congratulations, and thank, thank you. you for just uh, messaging. This is very important about child abuse. This is nothing to take lightly, and uh, I appreciate uh, recognizing this uh, month, or should I say recognizing this National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And we will, if you could, come up and take a photograph with us. Do you have any else, anybody else here with you? If you do, we'll come down. Thank you, Just you? Okay, well, yeah, well come on up. That'll make it. Thank you. Katie and Katrina, thank you so much for taking the time to come and share this proclamation with the Board of Commissioners this evening. Next, Board of Commissioners, we have presentations. We have a special presentation by our very own Representative Kimberly Alexander. Representative Alexander, if you could come forth. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. If my Senator two, James, did you want to come stand? Uh, and <laughs> Representative Bodie, okay, if you could stand. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, every year, um, I try to give back to some of the elected officials here in the county, and um, they were down in, I want to say February, March. And I gave them one half of their certification that I had, and I have another one here because it wasn't ready at the time, so it's ready now. <laughs> uh, so I had to give them just the uh, outstanding citizen at that time, and I had to rush. It was so busy. I had to rush and give it to them on the steps of the Capitol. <laughs> so um, I have the House resolutions here today, and I will start with the vice chair. Um, recognizing and commending Kelly Robinson on his outstanding public service and for other purposes. Whereas Kelly Robinson has long been recognized by the citizens of this state for the vital role that he has played in leadership and his deep personal commitment to the welfare of the citizens of Georgia. Whereas he has diligently and conscientiously devoted innumerable hours of his time, talents and energy toward the betterment of his community and state as evidence dramatically by his surplep, sur, uh, it's a lot of words, <laughs> superlative service as vice chairman and district two commissioner for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Whereas Kelly Robinson's significant organizational and leadership talents, remarkable patience and diplomacy, keen sense of vision and sensitivity to the needs of the citizens of this state have earned him the respect and admiration of his colleagues and associates. Whereas he is a person of magnanimous strengths with an unimpeachable reputation with integrity, intelligence, fairness, and kindness. And whereas Kelly Robinson has served with honor and distinction with Douglas County, and his vision and unyielding commitment have set the standard for public service. Whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that the outstanding accomplishments of, his, of this remarkable and distinguished Georgian be appropriately recognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives that the member of this body recognized and commend Kelly Robinson for his efficient, effective, and unselfish and dedicated public service to the state of Georgia and send the most sincere best wishes for continued success.
have um, another one that this is for my commissioner. <laughs> my commissioner, which is recognizing and commending Henry Mitchell III on his outstanding public service for other purposes. It has some of the same language, um, but I still just feel like I need to read it because it's for Okay. Mr. Mitchell. Whereas Henry Mitchell III, III has long been recognized by the citizens of the state by, for the vital role that he has played in leadership and his deep personal commitment to the welfare of the citizens of Georgia. Whereas he has diligently and conscientiously devoted innumerable hours of his time, talents, and energy toward the betterment of his community and stayed as evidenced dramatically by his superlative service as the Douglas County District 1 Commissioner. Whereas Henry's significant organizational leadership talents, remarkable patience and diplomacy, keen sense of vision and sensitivity to the needs of the citizens of this state have earned him the respect and admiration of his colleagues and associates. Whereas he is a person of magnanimous strength with an unimpeakable reputation for integrity, intelligent fairness and kindness. And whereas Henry Mitchell III has served with honor and distinction with Douglas County and his vision and unyielding commitment continually set the standard for public services. Whereas it is abundantly fit and improper that the outstanding accomplishments of this remarkable and distinguished Georgian be appropriately recognized. Now therefore be it resolved by the House of Representatives that the members of this body recognize and commend Henry Mitchell III for his efficient, effective, unselfish, and dedicated public service to the state of Georgia and extend the most sincere best wishes for continued success. And all of you guys are doing a great job. I just think that it's, um, it's good to recognize those individuals that commit a lot of time and work to, the, to improve Douglas County. You guys have did that, all of you have. Continue success, and we continue to support you, and thank you for the great job that you're doing for Douglas County. Thank you. May we come down and take one more photograph. Order commissioners, one more. <laughs> we can come up there. You want us to come up there? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner um, Robertson and Commissioner Mitchell, they want their photographs. Um, they, they deserve it. They deserve it. Along with city commissioners. But don't have me. You want us to move? We can move. Yeah.
Congratulations again to uh, Vice Chairman Robinson and Commissioner Henry Mitchell III on this uh, amazing accomplishment. And it's so well deserved. You've worked hard. You are outstanding citizens. And thank you. And it's an honor to serve with the two of you. So thank you so much. And we appreciate you. Next, we'll move on to, uh, we have one more presentation tonight. Uh, we have a 2019 ACCG Civic Engagement Youth Leadership Award. And uh, our External Affairs Director, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, and Michelle Nesmith yes. from ACCG is yes. presenting an award tonight. Yes, and I promised Ms. Nesmith I would give some background information. So as we know, the Douglas County Youth Commission um, is, in, is in its inaugural year, and we have been going from September through April. They will be graduating on Tuesday. Um, it's been a fantastic program. We have 21 amazing students from all over the county. Um, they've had an opportunity to learn about our county. They've been on field trips to the Capitol, where they've had an opportunity to meet with our le legislative delegation, the Secretary of State, They've gone to the animal shelter. They've done some amazing things. So we have Ms. Neesmith here today to present an award to one of those students. Thank you, Ms. Neesmith. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. Madam Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Michelle Neesmith, and I'm the Research and Policy Development Director for ACCG. I also serve as the Civic Affairs Foundation Director as well. And today, it's my honor to be here to present the 2019 ACCG Youth Leadership of the Year Award to Diamond Solomon. <laughs> sure you want to see your award, but I have a few things to say first. Um, this is the fourth year that ACCG has presented this award, so you're our fourth awards recipient. And in order to be considered for this award, um, you have to represent ACCG's passion for leadership and community by demonstrating excellent leadership skills at school and in your community, exhibiting initiative and leadership potential, in setting and achieving short and long-term goals and exhibiting an understanding of the skills effective leaders possess. And upon reviewing your application that was submitted by Director Stanley, we felt that you exemplified all of these qualities more than any other candidate. And I have to say that after reading your application and seeing that you're a straight A student, varsity basketball player, you work, you um, have a mentorship program, and you have led many community volunteer opportunities, including can drives, blanket drives. I was exhausted after I read her application. So um, it is definitely my honor here today to present you with this award, and thank you for everything that you do for your community in Douglas County. Congratulations. Could you all both come up and take a photograph with the Board of Commissioners and then you also could take one together as well. I'm so proud of what all our youth are doing here in Douglas County. Just so
made to last. <laughs> Do you have a comment? Madam Chair, that award was outstanding. I would be remiss if I did not recognize how important this was that uh, in the back of the room is the general counsel for ACCG, Kelly Pridgen, yes. who, used, who was a resident of Douglas County yes. and also Hi. used to work for Douglas County. She, I thought I should at least recognize yes. her presence. So that this is a big nice. deal because we don't get <laughs> Kelly to very many meetings. <laughs> oh, welcome. Miss yes. Kelly Pridgen, hey, if Kelly. you would just stand so we can just recognize you. We want to do that. Hey, Thank you so much, Attorney Pinard. All right. Board of Commissioners, we are now moving into our business items. And we have um, tab number seven, resolution of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners regarding county, county issued purchasing and our credit cards to designate to all local Douglas County elected officials the option, it's an option, to receive a, a county issued credit card and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, you have heard this resolution. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on tab number seven? Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yesterday we had a long discussion about this at the work session. There was a lot of confusion. Uh, it started out with uh, just the commissioners here uh, receiving this and then uh, the credit cards and then it expanded to all elected officials. And I would like to see us table this and have more discussion about this. I think um, everyone is, uh, uh, they, 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 they've heard in the news about Fulton County, what's going on with Fulton County and their P cards and everything. And I think we're opening Pandora's box with this, extending it to any and everybody. And um, we just, I think we need further discussion on this. And uh, I yield back. Okay, any other comments? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate it. We, we'll, we'll keep this simple tight. I, I, I say don't table, call the question, but here, here's my sentiments. Um, there is, everyone is not confused. We're very clear on what this is about. Um, comment was made earlier about enablement. This administration is about empowerment, not about an autocracy uh, with a concentrated management style uh, where you were limiting the offices of elected people to get stuff done. We should not have to go to county clerks, county managers to facilitate things that purchasing cards and credit cards have been around in business for 30 years since I began my career. We're not in the Flintstones, right? We're, we're more contemporary and progressive than that. If one doesn't want to use the tool like a laptop, a cell phone, you don't have to use it. It's just a tool. It has nothing to do with underwriting. This is a tool that's already tied to a budget. Uh, we, we know where this source is going to come from, and it's, it's really simple. Um, I mean, but here's the thing. This is not the first time cars are being used in the county. The sheriff office already has them, and it's just not the elected official. The district attorney has cards, and it's just not the top person. This is nothing new, right? We already have the precedent. We as elected officials already know the implications, but by association for everything that some other county does, 
bad doesn't mean that everybody else will be bad. We have to manage our own behavior and be held accountable, right? How we use these cards is on us, right? We do something improper, we deal with the implications of that on top of taking an oath, right? So there's no confusion about this. We're, we're, we, we know what we're about, and we're just trying to facilitate something that allows us to get things done. Uh, we do a lot on behalf of the citizens. We're out and about. I should not, and I'll speak for myself, I should not have to float the county for a hotel room for county business. What? Why would I do that? You wouldn't do that for a private company. Why are we acting new with the suggestion we need to think more about this? We're just bringing something into more contemporary times and saying, okay, if you want to use it, you can. If you don't, we'll keep it moving, All right? But we're beyond that. Us having to debate things that are like, why are we doing this? It's already proven here in the county. We're already using it. We have a track record. Go pull the records of everybody who has had a card. Look at that. And I do agree with my, uh, my colleague who joined me um, to expand it beyond just the district commissioners. It's any elected official. If you got people that are below elected officials who have the car, then why can't other elected officials have the car? So while we're in there, we decided to clean this up. Uh, we're very clear on where this will be budgeted from a source perspective. This has nothing to do with our expense account. Let's be clear about this. We'll take that up later in the year. Um, and so again, this is just a tool that's already available. Um, and we're just spending a use beyond just the board of commissioners, I mean, excuse me, the board chairman to include the district commissioners and all other county level uh, elected officials. With that, Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you, Vice Chairman Robinson. Ma'am. Any other comment? Commissioner Guider. Just to clear up a, a few things, I've been in uh, county government for 40 years. I've never had a credit card. I've never had the use of a credit card. I've never had to pay for a hotel room uh, with my personal uh, credit card. But when you have... Um, an official go on TV and admit to abusing a county car, and then you want to give them uh, a county credit card, I think we need to rethink this. And I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other comments? Uh, Commissioner Carthen. Being the new commissioner here, I have had to twice put things on my credit card. Personal my personal credit card, including a hotel room, including things for problem. the county. <laughs> Whether it's a staff problem or not, I feel as though I shouldn't have to float that on my own mm -hmm. income, right? It shouldn't cost me to be a commissioner. It shouldn't come out of my personal funds. I'm here to serve my constituents and I will do whatever it takes for my constituents, including going in my pocket to ensure that I have the, the means to service them and to get the education and the training and the tools out to them. But I shouldn't have to do that, right? When we have the tools in the county to service our constituents. I think each and every one of us up here has taken an oath to serve our constituents. As elected officials, we know right from wrong. And if we choose to do something wrong, whether it's with the county credit cards or any of, or the cars or anything else, it is incumbent upon us and our character. So with that being said, I think that we should go ahead and call the question so that we can efficiently serve our county constituents. I yield, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Mitchell? I didn't know if she was going to call the question. I was a little nervous to get a chance to say something. However, <laughs> however, I, just from a legal perspective, and, and, and I agree with my colleagues about why we should, why we should move forward. But however, can just for clarity, in the work session, we talked about some, a couple of changes to make sure, as I stated, that it should be all elected officials, Douglas County officials, and so on. Can you kind of clarify that part for me, and then I'll move on with my yeah, statement. Before you is all county elected <laughs> officials, and typically a county elected official would be one that is either subject to our budget or qualifies locally Correct. for elected office. Those that qualify downtown, the Secretary of State's mm -hmm. office or elsewhere, like the DA or considered state officers. So we're only talking about expanding this list to local county officials that are elected locally, which would be, and I don't want to go through the whole list because right. I'm scared I'll miss one, right. such as the Board of Commissioners, such as the Chief Magistrate, such as uh, the State Solicitor General, 
such as the state court judges because they're elected all locally. Mm -hmm. yes. okay? They qualify locally, they're county officials. Mm -hmm. And that language is in, in this? That, 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 this language excludes state officials, but Correct. picks up all local county elected officials. Right. And, and, and last but not least, does it say that you shall take this card or that's an optional if you? It's, it specifically has the word, has the option to receive a county issued purchasing card. Correct. And I, should, I probably should, for public consumption, say, right. The county already has a policy in place. Yes. And this resolution is reaffirming that policy, and uh, that policy is administered by the director of purchasing. There's also uh, essentially an user agreement that has to be reached that complies with the policy about how it's used. And last but not least, these these items that this card will be used for, you'll still have to note um, with receipts and so on. Correct. <laughs> For audit purposes and in compliance with the policy, and I'm going to speak for Bill, but I'm going to try to. A simple credit card receipt is insufficient for audit purposes mm -hmm. to actually have it paid by the county. It would also have to accompany the documentation supporting the charge on the credit card. Correct. And the only reason I wanted to, for the public record, that they want, want to make sure that they understand, as my uh, colleague stated, that, I mean, again, this is optional. It's, it's your call. I mean, if you decide not to, which that's on you. However, um, I too have paid for credit, I mean, uh, rooms and board and uh, flyers and so on. It's been kind of the norm. But in this time, in this age, I think we move forward in a, in a, in a light of, uh, of a credit card makes more sense. And uh, I've been able to pull off that and wait for the reimbursement but if there's a tool in place that could avoid that, I'm the first to say let's do it and not let me um, concern myself about my next light bill and whether or not I'm able to kind of pull that off and wait for the, the county reimbursement. So I think this only makes sense, but just keep in mind it's your option. If you so choose to you know, use the credit card, use it. If you don't, then don't. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Again, this uh, credit card will be optional, and it is not required that the uh, Board of Commissioners or any other elected official use this card. Again, open records are available. If, yes. if our citizens have concerns and want to know what's being charged, they have the ability to look at that. Actually, I believe someone pulled mine. It had $26 on it. I'm quite sure they didn't have a whole lot to read. But I, too, have been uh, inconvenienced twice with having to pay my <laughs> hotel room. Um, when I was first elected, but no, I didn't pay. I made a phone call and I asked my staff what happened, why am I paying? Other commissioners are walking out the door. They had credit cards from other counties. They checked out of the hotel and they were gone and I was still standing there. That was the most embarrassing moment that I experienced just the first day uh, ready as an elected official. So I'm just that I'm so glad to hear that my other colleagues have gone through the same thing that I have. But the card does not mean free reign, loose, it means in extenuating circumstances that you can, you know, that, that card is available to you if, you if there's a problem, if your hotel room is not paid. So with that being said, I'm, I'm going to call. And, and Madam Chair, just yeah. for one quick clarification, mm -hmm. the therefore part of the resolution is exactly as I've just stated earlier. The whereas clause is going to be changed because originally it was going to move to just expanding the list of county commissioners post-meeting yesterday or during the meeting yesterday, there was a discussion about all mm -hmm. elected officials in our <coughs> state. So the last whereas clause will match the therefore clause. So it includes all uh, local county elected officials that are not state elected officials. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Attorney Bernard. Well, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Please prepare to cast your votes. Okay, the, uh, the vote is four to one, and the motion carries, so Madam, thank you so much. Uh, 
Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, just real quick, and I might have blinked when I heard it. Did we say the amount that the limited control um, um, is allowed to be used? Mark or Ken, can y'all speak to that? Just uh, I, uh, well. Let, let me first say this, this overriding caveat, and Bill, I may need you, so be on right. standby. I want to say that the right. policy caps it at 15, but the commissioner's use of a credit card would have to be for three functions. Number one, it'd have to be an expense <laughs> that is incurred as an incidental that would be subject to $300 a month or $3,600 over the course of the year, prorated if you don't serve a full year expense. Or it would be 100% if you're outside the county on official county business that's authorized by this board. For instance, going to the ACCG conference, hotel, accommodations, food, whatever, uh, pursuant to the policy. And then the third would be authorized expenditures by the board that are either budgeted or approved for use. You could not use this card no matter what the max is for any personal use. And you couldn't use the card for a non-Board of Commissioners authorized expenditure. I hope that clarifies. Bill, did I hit that right? Yes, sir. The card limit is 5000 I'm sorry, I said 15, 5000 <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Director. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. The motion carries. And we'll move on to the next item. All right. Tab number eight, <coughs> authorization to adjust compensation for the DC DOT field staff to make salaries more competitive, imp improve employee retention, and help attract qualified applicants as recommended by the Transportation Committee and amend the budget. Board of Commissioners, do we have an authorization to adjust the compensation for the DC, Doug basically Douglas County DOT field staff? Do we have a motion? Yes, ma'am. Motion moved. <coughs> do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Commissioner Guider. Uh, yes, uh, and we talked about this yesterday. Um, I certainly um, am not here to say that Miguel does not need uh, an increase for his staff of 35 employees. My uh, objection <coughs> to this is that we just went through our 2019 budget process and it was not brought up during the budget process. We have got to keep control of our budget. Nothing has changed since we adopted our budget with our revenues. We don't know what our revenues are going to be. So it's our, only our expenditures that we can control at this time. Um, this was not even a BIR, a budget improvement request in his budget. <coughs> so to bring it up, um, I assure you this will domino throughout the county staff. Uh, we've already had four, I think, b between uh, just since the first of the year. Um, it's just, it's, a, it's called budget for a reason. You have to budget and you can't just keep adding to the budget when you don't know where the revenues are coming from. And we've already had two commissioners on this board say or uh, spoke about not rolling the millage rate back uh, because they see that revenues are not growing. So uh, I just say that we the timing is wrong. I have I love Miguel. He's he's doing a great job and everything. But the timing is wrong. It should have been done during the budget process. I know he's got a large department, but so does Parks and Recs, and so does the fire department. Are we going to allow them to come and and increase their um, salaries for their staff? We just went through, a, but. Um, a study uh, about the salaries. We paid good money for that study. We implemented that study, and now we're deviating from it, and it's only two years old. Um, but had I do not feel that you know something now that you didn't know at the first of the year, and this should have been brought up through the budget process. Otherwise, we might as well all go home if we're not going to 
uh, take charge of our budget. That is our main responsibility for the county, and that means all departments. And if we do this for you, uh, one department, I assure you we're going to have others come forth and say, well, I've got some underpaid uh, people that work for me. This is not right. The timing is wrong. It should have been done during the budget process. And it's nothing against Miguel himself. Uh, I know he's got a lot on his plate with all the splash uh, projects that's going on and everything, but so does everybody else. Parks and Recs, uh, Gary Dukes, you know, he's got the same thing, the fire department. We got a lot going on with the fire department, but it's just, it, it's, it needs to be done at the proper time in order for us to control our budget. And I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider, Com Commissioner uh, Robinson, or Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And <clears throat> I'll separate the two conversations. Talking about the military, we'll deal with that in about three or four months. It's not necessary. Um, if you think about a budget with anybody, uh, whether it's your household uh, or a business, yes, you should have a plan. But it's not linear in the sense that there always should be just sort of a, a little wiggle room, little contingency, little savings, little rainy day. Nothing is linear. It bends for advanced math, all right? All right, so here we are, we've got a budget. And the unexpected is what we call the unexpected or the unplanned can happen. If you live in a dogmatic and a very linear and nothing can happen, it's gonna be this way, it's gonna be straight, you will miss that curve in the road. So Miguel didn't have to, he could not anticipate that the market would turn in such a way that people, for the most part, and again, as chairman of transportation, uh, I was willing to bring this to the full board of commissioners to hear them out on this, which was, well, these people are leaving. If the number one priority in the county in transportation went uh, by way of the SPLOS, 51% is transportation. If it's the number one thing that we're putting a lot of money for behind as it relates to single departments or as much as anybody else, you know, put, put the Constitution to the side for a minute, we're talking about straight administrative, uh, it's transportation. And we're saying it's supporting one thing to our citizens, but we're turning around looking at staff like, okay, he can't sustain that. He's losing people, right? He's losing number two. He's losing number three. He's losing people at the bottom end. I mean, it's, it's like, guys, if that's your priority, he ain't gonna make it from there. So what happens when people leave? Well, you've gotta correct. You stick into a plan that's broken. The people have left. They're leaving. We've got to be competitive. We just heard from Madam Mayor earlier talking about the need of trying to be competitive for the city of Douglasville as it relates to public safety uh, against MARTA, right? Let's, let's, let's be real about what it means to be a manager. You manage, you manage it to the plan, and when there's deviances, which are going to happen, you make corrections. It is basically our discretionary choice to say, is this a priority for us right now? Those potholes are supposed to be done by in-house staff. They can't get to it because they're losing people. So how on one hand we're going to tell the citizens that we're going to fill the potholes when they're telling us that is a priority for them. You're tearing up my cars. Don't make me start making a claim against y'all. But yet we're not staffing and, and properly doing that. So I get it. There's no right or wrong. I'm not invalidating or marginalizing any other department. But as I always said, you got $10 worth of need and $1, all right? Um, we have a contingency by design. Every year we put aside a certain amount of money to deal with contingency. This is a contingency moment. Now, I don't disagree that this should be a habit, but this is based on a priority that was set that we pretty much all said that this was important. I think for the most part, this is again, call the question um, as is. Um, everyone must vote their consciousness. Um, um, and I, I wanna clarify, um, just as I yield the floor, um, county administrator, what was the source and what is the exact amount of the variance on this, please? Just for the record. I'm sorry, the source and the variance? Yeah, no. What is the source of the money? How are we going to make this up? How are you so going to make this up? These funds will be paid out of 110 and okay. it will be paid out of, of the specific line item tied to the transaction. Okay. So it depends on the transaction. Okay. All right. So, and what's the exact amount? Miguel, can you come for it real quick? I 
I'm sorry, County Administrator. I caught you off guard there. I was just, no, you're okay. I, I was, no, I was still, look, I'm still over here look, thinking about the credit cards. That's so why no, I figured you, you, he, he wasn't so with what you guys. I was still on the previous hour. Hard. I appreciate that. <laughs> Miguel, real quick, I'm don't make this long. Uh, certainly. Clarify what this is uh, specifically. Is. Good evening, Madam yeah. Chair and Commissioners. Yes, the, uh, the shortfall in order to, uh, to make this happen this year, uh, for the remainder of the year, is $34,587. That is what it would take to bring those salaries to a more competitive uh, level, uh, not exceeding and not above the, the region, but just to, to make them co competitive. Okay. All right. If you've answered our question, I'm, I'm, keep it simple. Um, it's something that we, we, we can get our minds around. Um, and I don't disagree. We're going to have to deal with um, a, a budget um, in its current edition later this year. So I'll just leave it alone. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you, oh, Miguel. Okay, thank you so much. Any other comments from the Board of Commissioners? Okay, well, I do have a closing comment. Um, I've been working with budgets a long time, and I'm very comfortable with my ability to manage budgets. Uh, we have not rolled the millage rate back in my two years that I've been here, and the game is to continue to remain steady and focus on not rolling, I mean, and rolling the millage rate back. And we've done that. And I feel very comfortable doing that. But however, the purpose of a contingency budget is to, in moments and times like this, we have to compete. I talked about that today in my state of the county. We must compete. We're behind. Our roads are not adequate. The staff, I mean, the citizens, we must uh, allow them to experience their tax dollars. And that's very, very important. And we're behind. And we need to do something to pivot and uh, capture this moment. So with that being said, I know uh, we said the fire department needs money as well, but I've never heard of anyone, and this is prior to me arriving, uh, allocating a carbon out a million dollars a year for overtime. I've never heard of that. You don't do that. And $500,000 500, this year for overtime. So there's enough money, I feel, for my fire and EMS at this time, and we have a raise coming. But right now, I have I have to put some boots on the grounds. Uh, the citizens are tired of us talking. They want these roads. Uh, they want them resurfaced. They want them manicured. They want whatever we need to do and whatever it takes right now. We are competing. So this is a com competitive moment for Douglas County to recover, and should I say for this board to uh, recover, first of all, our reputation and our image that we get things done. So I'm comfortable that it's coming out of our uh, contingency. It's not coming off the general fund. It's coming off that contingency that's just sitting there. And I believe, how much is in the contingency? Um, uh, approximately County administration. 428,000 that's hit the books. There's, there might be a couple of small POs in the system. OK, but so we have enough. 428 is hit. OK, it's OK, remaining. thank you for cl clarifying. We have a motion and a second. Uh, I've, any other further discussion? Board of Commissioners, uh, please prepare to cast your votes. All right. We have a 4 1 vote, and the motion carries. Thank you. The motion carries. Board of Commissioners, uh, I believe, Vice Chairman, you have one board. Yes. Okay. I'd like to amend it. Um, I'd like to ask if we can bring the Director Hallman down, Madam Chair. Director Hallman, please come forward. Our Director of Finance, if you could come forward. I'd like to meet, amend the agenda in relation to our Finance Committee meeting that we had yesterday. Jennifer, can you meet, read the? Absolutely. Uh, good evening. Um, what we're adding or would like to add is authorization to approve an amendment to the Terminus Municipal Advisory Agreement in the amount of $15,000 to review and examine the Fox Hall project proposal and its potential impact on the county's financial position. This includes the additional request of a risk assessment analysis. Okay. Do we have a motion to add this item to the agenda. So move this agenda. red. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please, uh, all in favor, just indicate by raising your hand to add this item to the agenda. Four to one. 
Okay, the motion carries. All right. Okay. You want me here? Yeah, okay. Um, I'll give backstop. Okay. Um, recently, as a formal agenda item, um, the Board of Commissioners Finance Committee um, had um, a proposal from our development authority uh, on behalf of the Fox Hall project. This is the equivalent of what's called Plan C. And with that, um, the intent was to get before the Board of Commissioners on a formal basis uh, to make a full presentation to all five of us. Um, I thought it would be um, permissive to let that come before the full Board of Commissioners, but without, uh, but it could not happen without the assistance of what I call a risk assessment. In other words, there is a reward that's being extended by way of the proposal, but there needs to be a supplemental risk assessment associated with that. So this is just to go ahead and amend terminus this agreement to um, go down that path of reviewing um, and assessing this particular project, which um, at least three of us are familiar with, and um, two of us will become familiar with over the next um, 30 days or so. I'll stop there. Now, Jennifer, you can fill in. Yes, um, as Commissioner Robinson <coughs> mentioned yesterday, we were given a presentation by the Development Authority, Chris Pumphrey, um, and the binder was about an inch thick, which is a lot of information to take in, even when you've been privy to some of the information in the past. Uh, we did have David Corbin with Terminus there, as well as our county attorney there, just to hear the highlights of the proposal. Uh, but again, we felt like in order to um, be able to, to lay it out, keep it simple, because it's a very, um, it can be very cumbersome to read, very uh, complicated, just, just in the, the amount of information that's available, um, that we would have somebody who deals with this, David has um, looked into development or private partner, public private partnerships. Um, so he's used to the, ling the lingo, the language, the structure. So we wanted to be able to have him to look at it, give y'all an overview of, of a risk and uh, assessment of it so that you know what is being presented um, on May the 6th by the development authority. I appreciate that. And let me just clarify, Madam Chair, I may continue with the floor? Yes. Okay. Um, it, what, what's important here, again, you, you're going to be presented with some information. Um, and what um, David Corbett, our municipal advisor, is going to provide us with is not to tell us to do this or not do it. It's to provide clarity on what you're looking at. It's basically the risk associated with that. In other words, there's always a trade off. Uh, we've been here before. Um, and so what they're going to do is present to us and tell us, okay, here's what plan A was, here's what plan B was that y'all signed off on, here's what plan C is and how it's changed from plan B. And for that exchange, there's a degree of risk with anything. And the Board of Commissioners and all five of us will go to our respective corners and read this information and take this in, and we've got to make a decision up or down. We're being clear because they've asked for us to do this by the end of May. The reason I'm accelerating the market, as, the, the risk assessment is just so that you're not shotgunned. I promise, and Commissioner Mitchell knows this, I will never let us be like that, like we experienced before, where you have developers and people who feel as though they're on some type of predefined timeline. Uh, there's no way. Now, Switch went fast uh, because it fit a, an investment profile. It was an easy box. This is a public-private partnership. There's no need to sit here and fake it like we can get through this in a weekend and read all this. You cannot. All right, so I'm looking out for the best interest. Like, guys, take your time, get this information, and I ask that you support this particular amendment to the terminus agreement so you'll have additional information to make a better decision. That's all I want to say, and I'm sure I yield. That's it. Okay. Any other discussion from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Guider. Yes. Um, for those uh, commissioners that were not here back when Fox Hall was voted on, um, we had two reports from Terminus, if I'm not uh, mistaken. They came back uh, when they wanted us to uh, back the bonds. And of course, everybody was against that, including uh, the vice chair here and myself. Um, and then they came back with about the EB-5 investment. Uh, the where you get government-backed bonds um, or you get foreign investors to come in and they 
back the bonds for a period of five to seven years, and then they get their money and they leave. But um, they were unable to get that funding. They could not qualify or, or something to that effect. And so then they were gonna go back and they were gonna have private in investors. Uh, we were, some of them on the board was okay with that. The reason I was against it was because the county will make absolutely zero money from that project for 30 years. 30 years. Uh, no funds come to us. The property is exempt for 30 years. And then they make the, they uh, build the convention center. They have all these conventions and they keep the money. But we get zero. Now there was a lot of talk about some pilot money. But the pilot money just filtered through and went back to pay off the debt. So uh, Douglas County got nothing out of that project for 30 years. I was laughed at when I went to ACCG meetings and was telling them what, we, what our board at that time did. They said, for 30 years? What are you talking about? <laughs> and we were getting no money. But we paid for two uh, uh, studies by Terminus already. What has changed? If they were unable to get EB-5 money and they were unable to get private funding or backers, why would the county want to go there? Why, we're flogging a dead horse here. And we need to stop and think, why do we want to take $15,000 of taxpayer money and throw a, a good, good money after bad? And I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Ryder. Any other comment from the Board of Commissioners? No, just, Madam Chair? Okay. Yeah, just, again, for clarity, just, I, I, you know, suspend all preconceived notion with this deal is. You need to read what's at the table today. Right. It has not come to pass yet. We, we haven't gotten anything because nothing has developed yet. Right, let's, let's be careful with the propaganda. That's what I'm saying. To my peers who want to hear truth, just wait until you meet with them individually. Wait till you get the report and you see it for yourself and you make all your choices. There's no we in with this. Each commissioner will make his own individual decision. There is no we. You got to own this one, as in times past. Now, we did put a caveat and we did um, close down the fact that there will never be another 30 year. And that's why the switch and the Google all of them fit within our tenure. We, we, we've done all that. I say, let's not rehash Fox Hall. It will have its day um, in, um, before the commission soon enough. That's what I'm saying. On this one right here, we just want to get the information, make sure you guys got a proper assessment, and then we can weigh in as strong as we want to next month. This, this is not time right now, Madam Chair. We just want to get the information. I yield. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Just, just one. For clarity, I, I think we're kind of talking about a couple of different things, and we're not really talking about what we – this is just informational purposes, period. Correct. Period. Um, and then let's also be clear on the piece of land that we're speaking of that's taxed and not taxed, what we're giving away or not giving away. We're talking about a small portion of Fox Hall that I'm not, not talking about the information, but, but we're talking about the land, the, uh, the uh, tax abatement we gave them. So we, we, we kind of make it sound like it's all, and it's not. It's a smaller portion of the land that we're speaking of, but we only want the information now so we can decide on what decision we want to take, either move forward or not. Okay. Just for clarity, I just, you know, I, we, we, we say a lot, and I think it's confusing to the general public as to what we're really talking about. Because I received the thought of it's all of this, but it's not. It's a smaller portion of the land that we're talking about that's dealing with Fox Hall. And that portion is what's not being taxed. Everything else is still taxed. Correct. Okay. I yield. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I yield. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Just to clarify, Mr. Just to clarify something, it's 95 acres. But on that 95 <laughs> acres is going to be the hotel and the convention center which will be exempt for 30 years. And I yield back. 
Okay. I'd like to make the motion. Okay. Make the motion. Madam Chair, um, I'd like mm -hmm. to go ahead and make the motion to amend the terminus agreement as stated by Director um, Hallman. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I just want to just add, Madam Chair, as this part of the discussion, take it, read it, come up with your, your, your resolve, but don't not read it and then think that you know what you're doing. So just take your time for those of us who know about what we're dealing with, for those of us who just came on board. Just take your time. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do here. Vice Chair and myself is trying to give you time to digest this before moving in whatever direction you decide. I yield back. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, I see you. I believe you want to say something? I, I am. I'm looking at Attorney Bernard to kind of get some direction. You've read over this agreement, and it is in line with what you would think in. The Terminus Amendment. Yes. The Terminus Amendment, if you choose to go forward, is in line with the customary fees and expenses associated with this review for, for an opinion, if that's what you're looking for. I am. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, please prepare to cast your votes. Well, you got call hand okay. Hand. Well, we have a motion and a second. If all in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand and say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Opposed. Okay. All opposed. Uh, four to one, and the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Director. We will move on to our consent agenda, and this should be pretty fast. Uh, tab number nine, <laughs> authorization to approve task order 2019-2 for the 2019 summer groundwater sampling laboratory analysis and reporting to Georgia EPD as mandated at a cost of $27,675 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 10, authorization to approve task order 2019-3 <laughs> for the 2019 completion of the landfill remaining capacity report at a cost of $1,400 as mandated by Georgia EPD and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorization to approve a Greystone power right away easement needed in order to install a transformer for the new sports lighting at Fair Play Park and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12, authorization to approve integrated constructions change order number three and number four at a total cost of $18,783.36 for the Boundary Waters concession stand press box construction as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13, authorization to award a contract to Integrated Construction Incorporation for the demolition of the Deer Lake Park tennis courts and restroom facility at a cost of $49,760.18 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and for the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, authorization to advertise for a public hearing for the American with Disabilities para Paratransit Plan that is part of Connect Douglas new fixed route bus service to be held on May 7, 2019. Tab number 15, authorization to adopt the resolution and award the bid for a tax anticipation note to PN PNC in the amount of $18 million for an annual rate of 2.25% uh, and authorize the finance director to invest the proceeds in Georgia for Fund One along with accompanying resolution for Georgia Fund One and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 16, authorization to award a contract to C.W. Matthews Contracting Company Incorporation for the 2019 SPLOST and LMIG road surfacing program at a total cost of $5,918,980 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization to award a contract to Yellowstone Landscape LLC for a 2019 shoulder maintenance mowing for a total cost of $312,540 for three cuttings during the year and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 18, authorization to award a renewal contract with CBM Atlanta Incorporation for general janitorial and carpet cleaning services at the Douglas County Courthouse for an annual cost of $79,638.30 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Tab number 19, authorization to approve an agreement to purchase real estate for a temporary easement on parcel 01590250031, located on Highway 5 in connection with the John West and Bright Star Road intersection improvement project to be funded with the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 20, authorization to approve an agreement, uh, an agreement to purchase real estate for right of way and easements on parcel 01580250048, located at 2960 Bright Star Road in connection with the John West and Bright Star Road intersection <coughs> improvement project to be funded with the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. That concludes our consent agenda. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular item? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We'll move on next to the approval of our expenses, tab 21 through 25. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any of these expenses? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right, next we have announcements. Ma uh, before you switch? Mm -hmm. Ma yeah. Yes, you may. The, the previous question, real quick, I just want to clarify within the consent agenda, and it's something obviously is always important regarding money. We, um, um, we're issuing a 10, and I just want to clarify that the amount of money that we're borrowing um, that was being awarded to PNC is um, a total of 18 million. 16 million, we have a deliberate cash flow use, and another 2 million we've got um, on standby for um, other uses, anything from pensions to um, a CSB to technology. Um, in other words, there is no um, um, framing for how it can be used, but it's at the full will of the Board of Commissioners. Is that an accurate statement? 16 million and 2 million. County Administrator, is that true? Yes, sir. Okay, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, next we have announcements. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, would you like to just uh, shed some light on your town hall tomorrow yeah, with, sure. the, with the yeah. public? Absolutely. Tomorrow is my spring town hall. I look forward to it. It's dedicated to Lee Road. I pro I've got a, a very good agenda. We're going to start sharply at 6 o'clock. Um, there will be food there. Um, I didn't necessarily have to use my expense account, though I could have. I've got a sponsor, which I do appreciate, VBH, um, that actually is sponsoring that for us. Um, and so come on out. We're going to talk about Lee Road, both its existing condition of where we were, where we're at, and where we're going as it relates to resurfacing, widening, and ultimate expansion. Uh, the typical, um, we've got Miguel Valentin is going to be a guest speaker, um, talk about the technical part. We've got the master planner. Um, I forgot the firm. I always forget the firm. Uh, but her name is, what is it? <coughs> Clark Patterson and Lee. Uh, Rebecca uh, will be there. Um, she's going to be speaking to the master plan. Come out and see the plans that we have for that area. I got my colleagues that are there, Terenia Carthen, District 3, Henry Mitchell, District 1, because again, Lee Road is not just about District 2. It is a corridor from east to west that covers um, three commission districts. And so uh, I know Commissioner Mitchell has already covered this in his district, and I'm sure Commissioner Carthen will cover this in her town hall coming up. But this is an important one because the citizens, are, again, are holding us accountable for the condition of their roads. I mean, we talk about roads and revenue. Well, let's, let's get to the roads then. And, and so we need to be accountable for that. So I'll come out tomorrow, 6 o'clock, Deer Lake Park, um, 2105 Mack Road. Uh, we'll start sharply at 6 with some exhibits and food. Uh, we will be done by 8 o'clock. Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. 
I want to yield to District 3 Commissioner Tarina Carthen regarding her town hall. Thank you. Uh, I will be having my first town hall on April 23rd. Uh, it will be at 4040 Chapel Hill Road inside the Studio T Plaza, which is right across the street from Chapel Hill Middle School. Uh, I will have the DOT, Douglas County DOT, who will ask citizens to give input and feedback on the Chapel Hill sidewalk project. So I would love for my Chapel Hill citizens and all of District 3 to come out and weigh in on that. We understand that Chapel Hill is a busy street and uh, we do want upgrades and we do want improvements, but we also know that it will be an inconvenience to the citizens. So we want them to understand what's going on and we want them to provide feedback. And I wanna update the citizens on my first 90 days and what has gone on uh, within District 3 and within the county. So again, it will be April 23rd, starting at 5 p.m. with the public input and we will start sharply at 6 p.m. with the town hall. Thank you, I yield. Okay, thank you so much. I wanted to check with you, Commissioner Mitchell, do you have an announcement? Oh, no announcement. Okay, what about you, Commissioner Guider? Any announcements? No. Okay, no announcements. Well, if you could, uh, Director Martin, come forth and we'll just uh, wrap up these announcements and then I'll close out. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board good, of Commissioners and staff. Uh, just three announcements to mention. Uh, the Douglas County Courthouse and County Programs and Services will be closed Friday. Uh, this Friday, April 19th, in observance of uh, Good Friday. Uh, Douglas County E911 to Sheriff's Office and Fire and EMS will be open as always uh, to protect and serve the residents of the county. Earlier this evening, our Representative Bruce uh, was here and we speaking about uh, Family Fun Day and Catfish Rodeo. Well, that his 17th annual Family Fun Day event is happening at Sweetwater Creek State Park on May 18th, that's May 18th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. All are invited. Last but not least, the Douglas County Department of External Affairs is now accepting applications to the Douglas County Citizens Academy through May 15th. Uh, the Citizens Academy is a 10-week interactive program offered once a year. For further information, all are invited to uh, contact the Department of External Affairs at 770-920 seven five nine three thank you thank you so much director martin board of commissioners uh, vice chairman robinson one more and this is just a, a brief announcement we'll, we'll take it under under commissioner and uh, today um, as chairman of transportation we had an update from from various sources regarding marketing regarding our connect douglas one of the takeaways out of that meeting um, is that there we are in the process our third party operator with whose contract will be before us soon um, or for that matter done, uh, uh, we are in the process of looking for drivers, all right? And one of the things is that it's important beyond going on Indeed or the Department of Labor, it's important that those who are listening to this, those people who are out there have been anticipating, participating in their government and would love to be a driver if you've got a CDL, you've driven school buses, you've driven Uber, you've driven Link, you've driven any other type of um, scenario that would fit this, we would want you to reach out to us right now. We're going to contact um, um, Fred, Rick, Rick Martin, Martin for right now, <laughs> um, Department of Communications. Just reach out to him directly. Uh, more information will be coming our in, uh, on our website regarding that. But because of the timing of the launch, um, they're in the process of interviewing now. And I just want to reinforce that those people who have been waiting on this, who would love to serve their county, um, and, and get a job locally and driving citizens around, please be aware of this. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, appreciate you tonight and also thank you today for supporting me in the state of the county. If there's no other business to come before this board, this meeting stands adjourned.